I mean, day one, we're putting a lot of numbers on the board. We're getting a bunch of fish, of fish, which makes it worth it in my in my That's mind. That's the first check mark. Yeah. Check that box. Get get fish. But then time started going on. We didn't get anything night one. Most of the day, day two, you you lost a huge one. We're just still putting up these little ones and I'm I'm thinking we're not gonna get the fish. Yeah. I came from a lifestyle of adrenaline. My 18th birthday, I went and jumped out of an airplane. And that was the first time I knew I had to have that, that feeling again. That's the life I found in the Special Forces. I was jumping out of planes, shooting guns, there were explosions all the time. And that became my normal. When I was there, I was chasing that adrenaline, chasing the hair in the back of my neck standing up. When I got out of the military, I found myself then working in television, traveling the world, doing survival trips, and I, I was back on the edge all the time. I was spending birthdays in volcanoes. I was, you know, swimming with crocodiles. It, that's the life that was normal for me. And when all that ended, I needed something to get me back that, that rush that I've been chasing my entire life, and I couldn't find it anywhere, and I ended up in the bars all the time and drinking and, and getting into a lifestyle that was meeting that that need of mine, I guess, but it was bringing me so far down. Then I started dating this girl named Meg, and her cousin John, first time we met, we sat down and we just started talking about fishing, and I'm talking about fishing as a hobby, and he just spewed obsession. I saw a look in his eyes that I, I knew he was exactly what was going on in my face when I would jump out of an airplane, and I knew that if fishing can do this for him, if being on the water and just or talking to somebody about fishing can make the hair on his arm stand up, it's something I need to be be part of. My cousin Meg, who I'm real close with, uh, started dating Grady, and I think they had been together maybe two or three months or something. And I'd heard about this mystery person who was an outdoorsman and did all these survival shows, and you know, kind of a lot of stuff I'm interested in in general. And of course, my cousin, love her to death, she basically set us up on like a blind date fishing journey. It was hilarious. So, so he shows up at my house, <laughs> it was that random. I mean, he literally came over, hey, John Link, hey, Grady Powell. All right, you're dating my cousin, you like fishing, let's go. We're gonna go to the Current River, I'll take you out on my favorite piece of water out there. You know, at that point, I'd already started Euro nymphing a little bit. And, you know, it was one of maybe like the third or fourth time I had even tried that technique on this water. And uh, took Grady out there, and obviously fishing's a little bit of friendly competition at all times. And he's fishing with a lot of traditional methods. He's watching me tight line through this through this run, and just following him down, picking up his trash after he's already fished the water. I'm picking up one fish, two fish, three fish out of holes he fished. He didn't catch anything, and so obviously he's like, "Hey, you got another one of those Euro leaders?" <laughs> The Current River is a fishery where you can jump on it in the dead of winter or in the blistering hot times of summer. It's always here for you, and that's what makes it so special to me. And especially having somebody like John to go fishing with, I'm still learning the sport. I'm still diving into it and, and kind of building. I want to build up to where John's at. Here in the Current River, we have a lot of fishing pressure. You know, there's fishermen coming through all day. There's a trout park up at the headwaters, up where the spring's at and a lot of these fish see a ton of flies. And the benefit to me for check nymphing and euro nymphing techniques, uh, even drop shotting techniques, is that you're getting your flies down in the trout's face and these fish are seeing a fly in a place they've never seen it before. You know, they get indicator shy, 
Uh, the flies just ride different in the water. You can't adjust an indicator quick enough every run to try to fish every single level of the water column effectively. With check nymphing, it's as simple as you know, lowering or raising your rod tip. You're feeling the bottom, you know where the fish are hitting, you can figure out where they're staging throughout the day and just be able to adjust your technique on the fly. It's incredible. I've never figured out a more versatile way to pick apart a piece of water. And it might not be like the sexiest way to fish. And you know, I love casting a fly rod and I, I definitely miss that throughout the day. Um, but as, as far as getting out there and be able to put a fly in a fish's face, you can just bump them right in the nose of the thing all day. Was it the night we got here we realized there was going to be another storm coming in? Yeah, so that was troubling, so we felt like we had to squeeze everything in kind of a little bit. I think we did all right. I'd say we did all right. I was on that log where you split off, and I pulled, I was toward the front of the log, and I pulled a couple decent fish out, and I knew if these fish are sitting out in front, there's got to be something bigger, a little bit deeper. So I scooted down a few feet, drifted just over their head, got down below, and right then. The second you see your dry fly drop, or you get that tiny little tug on your nymph rod, and that adrenaline just surges through your body. And I've got everything that I need in life. I've got my calm, and I've got my peaks. That's what fishing is for me now. Here I'm, I'm thinking, I finally got a fish bigger than John. And you came, <laughs> you came home with a tank. <laughs> Using a three weight rod and roping into a 23 inch brown, taking you for a ride for you know, five or six minutes on this beautiful spring fed river here is just something you can't be compared to. Hey, we started, that's the tree up there. <laughs> that's the tree sticking oh out. Oh my gosh. We went what, 100 yards? 110? And the fact that this river can feed a fish that big in such a small body of water its is head was massive. It was a fat fish. It, was it wasn't river. skipping meals. <laughs> hit the stone? Yeah, hit the stone, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I'd run through that hole a couple times, didn't get any hits, didn't even pick any small fish out, and I was like, yeah, I'll take a couple more casts. I was about to walk away. And then I thought I snagged. The thing just, you know, took that three weight and keeled it over. Oh. And it started moving around, and then I was just doing whatever the fish had to do. I was just following it and hanging on for dear mercy Dude. after that. I was like, you ended up like 200 yards down. Yeah, it took me for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good weekend. Cheers.